So I really like spin classes, cycling classes, biking. It's just one of my favorite forms of exercise. Before the quarantine, I used to do them at my gym. I'd do soul cycle from time to time. And now that we've been quarantined for, well, a, a long time, <laughs> I was starting to really miss cycling classes. And then I had a little thought pop into my head and I remembered that, what should we call it? Interesting? Peloton bike commercial from last Christmas. A Peloton? I'm a little nervous, but excited. And I know we all laughed at that commercial in December, but that was a different world. And I was like, okay, I low key wanna get a Peloton bike in my house. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna embrace the cringe of that commercial and buy a Peloton bike. I'm gonna try it for 30 days and document the process, my experience with it. I'll give you guys my brutally honest review of the bike and if it's actually worth that hefty price tag. And since I've also tried SoulCycle for 30 days in a past video, at the end of this video, I will compare Peloton and SoulCycle. Also, I just wanna note, I'm not gonna be talking about weight loss in this video. For me personally, that's not my goal for exercising. My goal is to build strength and stamina and connect with my body. And when I say that I'm going to try it for 30 days, I mean that I'm going to try this bike for a 30 day period, taking breaks within that whenever needed. I think it could feel a little restricting for me to force myself to exercise every single day for 30 days, no matter what. I'm going to listen to my body and also sometimes life just gets busy and I might not end up riding that day. So maybe I will end up riding the bike for all 30 days, or maybe it'll be more like 20. I'm open to either. It's important to listen to your body and take breaks when you need them and use exercise as a celebration of what your body can do. Now let's cut to me buying this Peloton bike. Oh my gosh, am I really doing this right now? Am I really about to buy a Peloton bike? It is $2,404 for the package I want, which includes your cycling shoes and the weights. And I'm sitting here looking at the computer and I'm like, oh, this is a bad idea, but is it maybe not? It's nice to be able to work out at home. So I'm gonna buy the Peloton bike. It says it takes seven weeks for it to get delivered. So it's gonna be a hot minute till I have it anyways. All right, running to see if I can get any coupon codes. All right, I used Honey and they applied a code where I saved $107.75. Thanks, Honey. This sounds like it's sponsored. This isn't sponsored by Honey. Maybe I could get this sponsored by Honey. I'm gonna text my manager. Good news, Honey said yes. So this video is actually sponsored by Honey. Thank you, Honey. This is like the most seamless sponsorship I've ever done. This is so cool. <laughs> so shopping online, we all do it. And you know when you see that little promo code box at checkout just taunting you because you don't have a promo code to enter and you start wondering, should I have a code? Well, thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is a free browser extension that finds promo codes for you and automatically applies them to your cart. So just like how you guys saw Honey save me $107 on the Peloton bike, I use Honey when I'm shopping on all my favorite sites like Madewell, Target, Nordstrom. Honey supports over 30,000 stores online. And when you check out, the Honey button drops down and you just click apply coupons. Wait a few seconds while Honey scans its database of all the working coupons for that site and then watch the price go down. I've personally saved a lot of money using Honey on big purchases like you guys saw me save over $100 with the Peloton bike and on smaller everyday purchases like saving $36 at Madewell. If you don't already have Honey, check it out. It's totally free and it saves you money. So don't wanna miss out. And if you use my link at joinhoney.com slash Sierra, you can do yourself a solid by saving some money and also help to support my channel. So get Honey free. That's joinhoney.com slash Sierra. Thanks, honey. Holy crap, I just spent $2,000 on a Peloton bike. Peloton bike, here we come. <laughs> Guess what got delivered? All right, so yesterday the bike got delivered. They put it right on the doorstep and then Steven just carried it in here. With the bike package that we got, it comes with the nice LCD, LED, what, what do you call this? Did I have it right? You can just say a screen. A screen. One month of the actual like, video service. Because that's the other thing. The Peloton bike itself is obviously very expensive, but uh, the cost does not stop there. There is a monthly membership to get the classes, the video classes. And then the package that we got also came with a few other little knickknacks. What's this? <laughs> 
That is your power cable for the bike. Ooh! And then we have a set of one pound weights and headphones, and then two pairs of shoes. The package came with one pair, but since this is a bike that both Stephen and I are gonna be using, we got a pair of shoes for each of us. Now the thing about a stationary bike like this is you do have to have clip-in shoes. I don't think they have to be Peloton brand. I'm pretty sure that all cycling shoes are created equally. So I'm actually really excited. There was a pretty big jump in time from the first clip of me actually ordering the bike to it actually getting here but the delivery was really really easy and it was contactless which was great well and the bike itself was pre-assembled yeah so they just wheeled it up to the door and i wheeled it in here and then i did get a fun uh, addition to oh. make it feel like you're on a long windy bike ride i bought a high velocity fan <laughs> <laughs> let's get this 30 days started i just set up my profile and now steven's setting up his so he has to take a photo for it oh look at how cute you are oh. no Oh, that's kind of cool. So you can link your Spotify. We're all ready to go. I uploaded mine on the app, but now I kind of want to take one like you did. So I went through the app on my phone and I knew that the subscription came with the cycling classes, but it also comes with a bunch of different categories that you can do off the bike. The subscription service is going to be $39 a month when our free trial ends. And I feel like it's not really worth having the bike without the subscription. Like what can you do on the Peloton without the subscription? A lot? What's the subscription for then? I appreciate the subscription, like having the classes, so. But if you can sit on a bike and just jam to music and do good, then yeah, you don't need it. Well, in that case, I definitely am gonna take advantage of the subscription while we have this free period, but I will test it out a little bit without the subscription and see if it's actually worth the $39 a month. I went through the app and I favorited a bunch of classes. That way they're saved to my profile. And when I hop on the bike, I can just go through my favorites. For each class, it tells you the level of difficulty out of 10, as well as like a percentage rating from other people who've done the class. First, I selected a bunch of beginner classes because I think that's definitely where I'm gonna wanna start. For the past four months, my only source of exercise and movement has been walking, running, and hikes around my area. So I do think my muscle strength and my muscle memory for cycling is gonna be pretty low right now. And then I also looked at the level of difficulty, the user rating, and the music that was gonna be played in that class to select which ones I thought would be a good fit for me. So Peloton has the on-demand classes, which are all the ones that I favorited. And then they also have a class schedule that you can see right here where it's actually live. So throughout this month, I will try some of those live classes. Those definitely make me the most apprehensive. Whereas the on-demand classes, I feel more like I'm in my own little world, but I will try both. One disappointment I'm having with Peloton so far, and I haven't even done my first ride, is from what I can see on the app, there are no musical theater classes. And my favorite Soul Cycle classes I've ever done were Broadway themed. I did a Hamilton one, it was great. They've got plenty of pop and rock, and Steven was getting very excited about a trap playlist. Ooh, Friday at 5 a.m. there's an EDM ride. But no musical theater, unless I just can't find it on the app. Also, there's no way to search for classes. They're just like put into collections. So maybe it does exist, but I just can't find it. This is the most Steven thing in the world. He finds something he likes and he jumps <laughs> right on into it after his first 10 minute ride. No, so okay, one thing we definitely need is a bike map. So he's on the Peloton website right now buying a bunch of stuff. <laughs> that didn't come with our package. Um, we do need a bike map, but I bet we could get one somewhere else for way cheaper that's not Peloton brand. Yeah, the Peloton one's like 50, 60 dollars. And then a water bottle, because I don't have a spray kind. I have like twist caps. One thing that we probably don't need is a heart, a heart rate monitor. You put the heart rate monitor in your cart? I'll put it away. Okay. You want a water bottle? No. All right, I'm taking advantage of the fact that this is a bike in my house and I'm not actually going in public and I'm not gonna wear a shirt. So let's, let's go to the Peloton bike. All right, first Peloton ride, here we go. Turn on our fan, connected my AirPods to the Bluetooth. Here are all of the classes that I favorited. Wait, here are all the classes that I favorited. All right, I'm gonna start with this class. It's the 20 minute beginner ride with Tunde. 6.6 .6 out of 10 difficulty, 99.4% rating. Oh, and um, this is your plan. So you have a four minute warm up, 15 minute cycling, and one minute cool down. Nice, all right, that sounds good. I'm gonna clip in. Got one foot, oh, I have to adjust the bike first. <laughs> This is to your height. All right, bike is set to my adjustments, fan is going, headphones are connected, and I'm ready to start my first Peloton class. Here we go. This was my view during my first Peloton class. 
Someone is creeping on me up there. I loved this instructor. Her name was Tune Day. Highly recommend. I'm gonna add her to like my favorites. She was really upbeat and really motivating, but she also very much focused on that like doing things at your own pace, listening to your body. And I loved how much she stressed that. The big thing that she kept saying was like, think about this class like cooking. I'm just giving you the ingredients and you can make whatever you want with it. There's no recipe to follow. You just take the ingredients and you do whatever. If I give you a potato, you could make French fries, you could make mashed potatoes, it's up to you. And I really liked that because I feel like that combined with the stats that it was showing motivated me to push myself a little bit further, but also reminded me to give myself and my body grace. Steven and I talked about this a little bit in my video about learning to love myself again after the miscarriage, but I feel like one of my biggest struggles with fitness is I underestimate myself a lot. And my brain, I've been told this by like almost every trainer I've ever had, my brain is the biggest thing in my way where I, my first instinct when something looks hard is I don't want to fail. So I just say I can't and I can't yeah. do that. I don't, you're scared to put yourself in a situation where you can embarrass yourself. Exactly. Yeah. And I was nervous about the, the stats. I think partially because of that and partially because of my history with, you know, just getting obsessed about numbers. But I have to say... I loved the stats. I loved the leaderboards. There were 17 people doing the class at the same time as me. And when I first noticed that was about halfway through the class and I was ranked like eight out of 17. And by the end of the class, I was at five out of 17 because that was motivating me to just push that extra bit. On here, it actually shows the leaderboards of everyone who's ever taken this class. So I am almost exactly in the middle. There's 112,000 people that have taken this class and I'm ranked at like 52,000. So I'm really excited about this. And I love that the classes vary from just 10 minutes up to an hour because that kind of motivates me more that I can do this almost every day. And if there's a day where I don't feel like doing 60 minutes, I can do 10, I can do 20, I can do 30. Yeah. I'm excited to try the live classes. I'm nervous about that. I read something that said like, if you're a beginner writer in the, in the live classes, they call you out. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do that. One thing that we both definitely agree on this is the fan is a must. <laughs> <laughs> because it's like kind of a stagnant area, like there's not a lot of airflow back here. I saw, I was in Lowe's and I was like, high velocity fan. I was like, oh wait, that actually is a great idea because yeah. we were going to use one of our fans, but. No, this is awesome. I feel like the fan is one of the things that kept me going. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I am pretty darn tired. Today is day two and uh, I did two classes back to back. In the past, the cycling classes that I have done at the gym I used to go to and at Soul Cycle were all either 45 minutes or an hour. So today I did two 20 minute beginner rides back to back and I feel great. I feel like it was the perfect amount of exercise and movement where I'm sweaty, I'm tired, but I'm not exhausted. And for me personally with my workouts, that's what I'm aiming for. I wanna feel satisfied. I want to feel good. I want to feel tired, but I don't want to feel completely drained. So I feel very, very good. One major complaint is my butt hurts so bad. And if you watch my soul cycle video, you know, I had the same complaint at the beginning of that journey. So I am going to start wearing, I have like padded cycling shorts that I bought for when I was doing soul cycle. I'm going to start wearing those. I also ordered a gel seat cushion for the bike. And other than that, if it's anything like my soul cycle experience, it's just going to take a little while for my butt to get used to it. But man, is it sore. Day three, I did not have as much time today for a full workout, which was actually really, really nice having the Peloton bike here and having like a good workout that I can get in in just a 20 minute class. Really enjoyed it. I actually had my personal best today, so that's really great. And my my butt still hurts, but not nearly as much as yesterday, probably because I did the two classes back to back yesterday. All right, day four, I just finished my first advanced beginner ride. So this was a 30 minute class that was supposed to be like the next step after you master the basics. And honestly, I was a little bit nervous going into it. I was like, oh, maybe I should do a couple more beginner classes. But after doing the class, I, there's no way I'm doing anything but the advanced beginner and then just the regular classes now, because I realized that the one thing that I was missing with these Peloton classes Classes was the actual like stand up pedaling. In Peloton, they call it a lift. So when you're like standing up and pedaling versus being seated. And up until now, all of the beginner classes had just been seated, which also might be why my butt was hurting so bad. And I just feel like with the standing, I get so much more momentum. I feel like I'm pushing myself more and I get a better workout. So 
This class was actually probably my least favorite instructor and my least favorite playlist, but my favorite experience because A, it was a 30 minute class instead of 20, so I feel like I actually did get a pretty good workout and then I did like five, 10 minutes of stretching after. And the time that I was spending in the class, I feel like was so much more worthwhile because I was getting a better workout and I was pushing myself more. So I'm glad I stepped it up to the advanced beginner sooner rather than later. And you know what? I think tomorrow I'm just gonna do a regular class, not even a beginner or advanced beginner. One thing I totally forgot to say that was on my mind during the class is because this was my first time on the Peloton bike standing, I definitely had the seat too high and I wasn't able to get in the right position. You're supposed to be more leaned back over the seat. But when I tried to do that, I was just getting smacked in the butt by the seat. So I ended up like standing a little bit more upright, which wasn't the right technique. So next time I ride, I'm definitely gonna bring the seat down a little bit. Also, Steven just did his first advanced beginner ride and he said that it was a little bit harder for him to grasp the standing up positions. That's definitely something to consider. If you've never really done cycling before, it's gonna take you a little bit longer to get in the groove of the standing positions and the lifts. So I've been posting on Instagram throughout these first couple days with the Peloton and someone DM'd me and said that Peloton just posted a Disney themed ride. It was 15 minutes low impact. So I really wanted to do that one. I started off with that and it was really fun, but I definitely wanted more after that. So I was gonna do a 30 minute ride and then I was like, oh, I don't really wanna try something new today. Like I'm just not in that mood. I wanna do one of the classes I've already done. But since all the classes that I had done up until this point were beginner and I'm, I'm kind of wanting to push out of that and do harder things now, I was kind of torn on what to do. And then I was like, wait, there's no reason I can't do a beginner class that one of the ones that I did earlier this week and just make it harder for myself. Because the thing is, when I'm doing like an in-person class, like at SoulCycle, I would feel like an asshole, honestly, if I was just completely disregarding what the teacher was doing and just did my own thing. You know, if she was saying, okay, we're gonna stay seated and I was standing up, or if she was saying, you know, we're pedaling at this rate and I was just completely ignoring her, I would feel like a jerk. And honestly, I'd probably be distracting other people in the class. But the thing with Peloton is, it's just me in this room and I'm not distracting anyone because no one can see me. So I ended up doing Kendall's 20 minute beginner class again because I loved her and I loved the playlist and I just made it harder on my own. I stood up more and I pushed further past like the cadence that she had set and it was great, it was awesome, it was perfect for me. Oh, also I adjusted the seat today to make it lower and it was so much more comfortable doing the lifted rides. All right, I just finished my workout. I'm actually still sitting on my bike. I've got my little bendy tripod here, but I ended up doing a 30 minute pick me up ride with Hannah and I think this was my best Peloton experience yet. I know Steven and I talked a little bit about the stats at the beginning of the video, but basically Peloton combines your speed or your cadence as they call it with your resistance to come up with like a total output number. And my total output number today is my personal best. And this pick me up class was exactly what I needed. I was a little bit worried that it was gonna be like preachy and like overly positive, but she, Hannah, was awesome. She was super encouraging and motivating without being like overly positive. In fact, one of the things she talked about is like, it's not realistic to think you're gonna be happy all the time. It's okay to have meltdowns. You're gonna have bad days. But what's important is taking those steps to get yourself out of that place. And I feel like that's exactly what this ride did for me today. I got very sweaty in this workout and I wasn't even thinking about pushing or, or trying really hard. I was just having fun and it was really good. And I expected to be kind of a negative Nancy at the end of this ride because I was not having a great mindset going into it, but man, I enjoyed it. Oh, am I drinking the Peloton Kool-Aid? I'm totally drinking the Peloton Kool-Aid. All right, it's day 10, I think. I am exhausted. It's like 10 o'clock at night right now. I had a very long day. I woke up at like 6 a.m. I filmed for like six hours. I already got some exercise in for today. I went on a walk. I've already closed my Apple Watch rings and for whatever reason, something is compelling me to still get on the bike and do a short cycling session. So let's do it. Alright, 20 minute ride, day 10 is a check. See you tomorrow. Wow, oh my gosh. I had the best ride. <laughs> I did my first 45 minute ride and also my first sing-along ride. Uh, just roll the clip, I had a good time. And I'm free, I want it that way. Output 
on this ride was like leagues above my output on other rides and not just because it was a 45 minute ride versus like a 20 minute ride or a 30 minute ride but because I was genuinely pushing so much harder than I have in any other rides just because I liked it so much it was so freaking fun. Oh, also this class was the first one I've done that utilized the weights and had an arm segment. Every Soul Cycle class that I've done has an arm segment. So I, I wasn't sure like at what level they start implementing those with the Peloton, but apparently it's the 45 minute rides and I really enjoyed it. It was a short arm segment and we just have the one pound weights, So they're super, super light, but it felt really good. And it was definitely a good addition to the ride. I enjoyed it. Woo, well day 12 was really good. I did a 15 minute workout and then I followed up with a five Five minute post ride cool down. It is day 13 and I just finished my first live class. So up until now all the classes that I've been doing were from the back catalog so they were pre-recorded, they had already happened, whereas the class that I did today was live. It was happening as I was pedaling and honestly I noticed zero difference in the way the class felt or the way I engaged with it, it felt exactly the same as a pre-recorded class. Except that before the class, I had lost track of time a little bit. I was working on a video and I was like, oh my gosh, the class I was planning to do starts in four minutes. So I was like rushing to get my shoes on and my hair up, but I did barely make it in time with a minute to spare. It was a 2000s themed like emo punk class, which that is like the only kind of music I listened to in high school was like scene music. So I really enjoyed it. It was really fun and uh, I'm excited to do it again tomorrow. Not live though. I'll probably go back to the pre-recorded classes because then I can do it on my own schedule and it feels exactly the same. Day 14, best ride ever. <laughs> so one of my complaints with Peloton so far had been that there were no like Broadway or musical theater rides. And then yesterday they posted a 30 minute pride Broadway ride. So you know, I woke up excited today, ready to do that. And it was the best. Favoriting this ride, starring it, gonna be doing it a million times over. Obviously the playlist was amazing. The instructor was fantastic. His name was Sam Yo. I will definitely be doing more of his classes. And just the way he structured the class was so awesome and I totally just got lost in the music and the choreography. There was choreography. He had us doing the grease lightning arms, which of course I am very familiar with. So fun, so great, and I got a personal record for my output on a 30 minute ride. Oh, and I forgot to say, but Today was the first day that I tried taking pre-workout before I did the Peloton, and it definitely gave me that extra energy, that extra push that I needed, especially because I was feeling kind of groggy this morning. I, I think I definitely will probably take pre-workout from time to time, especially if I'm doing like a longer ride, like a 45 minute ride, or if I ever do an hour ride, or if I just need the extra boost like I did today. It definitely helped. So today is day 15, my halfway point for the video, and I was actually just gonna do the Broadway Pride ride from yesterday yesterday again because I loved it so much. And then I noticed that actually on the tablet on the bike, there's a way to search for classes by a keyword. Whereas I've been using the app on my phone up until this point and there was no way to search. So when I found that, I searched Broadway and found out I was wrong about this being the only Broadway ride. There are six others. So I will be doing a different Broadway ride today. The app interface like on the iPhone app is very different than the app interface on the actual Peloton bike monitor. And the interface on the bike monitor is like 10 times better than the app. And so I found it a little bit frustrating at, you know, trying to find certain classes on the app or search by certain things. Even just trying to find my bookmarked classes on the iPhone app is not very user friendly. And especially now that I've discovered that there is a search feature on the bike. I think that whenever I'm looking for classes, I'm just gonna come stand up by the bike and do it because the iPhone app is, it looks good, but it doesn't work all that well. Well, uh, this is a first for me with the Peloton, but I did my first class that I was not a fan of. <laughs> And I know you would expect me to love it because it's a Broadway class and the playlist is great. I love that. This was actually the first instructor that I was just like, you know, you're, I'm, I'm sure you're a very nice person. I'm sure there are lots of people who love your classes, but it's just, it's not my cup of tea. But I do think I had started to just assume that every single instructor I was gonna try was gonna be like 10 out of 10 amazing because that had been my experience so far. And I think it also just really reinforces that like the instructor can make or break a class for you. And you have to take a bunch of different instructors so you can find which ones are your favorite and then 
stick with them. And there is such a wide variety of instructors, so there's something there for everyone. But um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and actually do a 10 minute cool down class with one of my favorite instructors up till this point, Tune Day, so I can end my cycling session on a high note. Day 16, and I had my first bike malfunction today. We actually moved the Peloton bike around a little bit because we were rearranging that room yesterday. And I guess when we set it back down, we didn't tighten like the bottom enough. And so in my first like lifted push where I'm not seated on the bike, it was wobbling all over the place. And I was like, what the heck is going on? But Steven came in and he tightened it and then it was all good. So no harm done there, but it was a little scary at first when it started wobbling. <laughs> today I did a 30 minute class followed by a 15 minute class. And I found that on days where I'm pretty active throughout the rest of my day, whether I'm going on a walk or doing some sort of other movement or just like running around the house doing a lot of chores and stuff. I find that like a 20 to 30 minute class is perfect. But on days like today where I was pretty sedentary, I finished the 30 minute class and I, I felt like I needed more. And that's when I decided to do the second class. So I think along with learning the Peloton bike and learning the different class structures and the different types and the different instructors, I'm also learning just like what works best for me. It's a balance and I think that balance depends a lot on what the rest of my day looked like too. All right, day 17, I just finished a 30 minute Lizzo ride, which honestly, I think today was kind of a turning point for me where I actually did start to notice that like my stamina and my strength has increased. I got up to 78 resistance at one point, which is the highest I've had ever on the bike so far. And I noticed that I was pushing my cadence more and I was keeping my resistance on like the high end of the spectrum that we're supposed to stay in. And also today I adjusted my seat a little bit higher, about two inches higher. I know earlier on in this Peloton journey, I thought I had it too high, but I posted a vlog with some footage of me on the Peloton bike and I got quite a few comments being like, hey, you should try lifting up your seat more. It seems like you're not getting the full range of motion in your legs. And if you lift up your seat more, it'll be easier. And I tried that today and I'm definitely glad I did. I. I think I had overcompensated for me having my seat too high at the beginning and then the past like week or so I'd had it too low. So I think I found a good spot now. But you know what? I feel like I could use a little bit of a cool down ride. So I think I'm gonna do a 10 minute low impact ride with Robin and uh, finish out day 17 strong. Because we have the fan right here, I honestly didn't notice how much I sweat during the Peloton sessions until today when I forgot to turn the fan on. And within the first five minutes, I was dripping in sweat. Yeah, I'm definitely getting my sweat on in these way more than I even thought. Day 19, I just finished my Peloton workout and actually last night after the workout I did, I started to feel some pain in my left knee and I actually have an old soccer injury there and it hasn't flared up in years. And so I got a little bit worried. I was like, oh my gosh, this could be really, really bad. This could be the end of the video if my knee starts getting really bad again because it was like a huge ongoing issue for me in high school when I played competitive soccer. But honestly, I don't think it's cycling. I think it's a, a me problem in that I did start to get kind of lazy with my form. So today before my ride, I watched some YouTube videos on like proper Peloton biking form and kind of brushed up on that. And also I'm just gonna try to be more mindful and intentional about my positioning, about my form. And it is really important for me to listen to my body. And if my knee is telling me that I need to stop or slow down, I need to do that. So today I started with the 15 minute low impact Disney ride and I didn't have any pain. And I was still feeling good, still feeling like I wanted more. So I actually did my first scene ride. So my first ride that wasn't a structured class with an instructor, basically I still get my numbers of like cadence, output and resistance. And then it just shows me like a pretty video of like forests and caribou and stuff. So I spent the first five minutes of this scenic ride just doing my own little arm segment. And then I spent the other 10 minutes of the ride just doing like my own self-paced low impact ride while listening to Hamilton, which by the way, Hamilton is 10 out of 10 for cycling. I was listening to Guns and Ships and then nonstop and I was, oh, I was having so much fun. Oh, one more thing I wanted to say that I totally forgot. So I, at the beginning of this video, I had talked a little bit about like the, the butt pain from the seat. And then I started wearing my padded bike shorts and had no issues totally comfortable. And today was the first day that I actually forgot to wear my padded biking underwear. And I was a little nervous that my butt was gonna get sore, but 
it didn't at all. So I think my butt has gotten used to the seat. I don't think I even really need the cycling underwear anymore. I might still wear them for longer rides, but I think after, what am I at? Like the two and a half week mark? I think my butt has, has gotten used to the seat. Today, I have a very busy day, and honestly, I wasn't quite sure if I was gonna be able to fit Peloton in, but I really wanted to do it. Like, I didn't wanna do it out of an obligation. I didn't even wanna do it for the video. I just wanted to do it for me. So I hopped on and did a quick 15 minute scenic ride. I'm actually surprised at how much I like those versus the classes. I thought I'd be 100% all in on the classes, but the scenic ride with my own music where I can play show tunes, 10 out of 10. <laughs> Day 21 went really good on the Peloton. I was a little bit worried because today was my first day pushing it like full gear since my knee had been hurting a little bit. But uh, I think I've corrected my form enough and I took those two days like a little bit easier. And so I didn't have any pain. I felt totally good. I ended up doing a 30 minute class followed by a 10 minute cool down. And I feel really good. I'm really glad that, uh, that my knee's not gonna hold me back. So today is day 23 actually. Yesterday, day 22, I was having kind of a rough mental health day. I didn't Peloton. It might have helped, but I struggled to get really much of anything done. And today was another kind of rough mental health day. And I was like, I do not want to work out. I do not want, I don't want any movement in my day. I just want to sit on the couch. But I was like, you know what? This is gonna make me feel better. So I put on a Fabletics outfit that makes me feel the cutest. I reluctantly hopped on the bike and clipped in and within probably two minutes, I felt some of that tension just release and all of a sudden I didn't feel the need to go crawl back into bed. I started to build up a sweat. I got really into the music and I really enjoyed it. I think it was really good for me. Is Peloton or working out in general going to solve all of my problems? No. Absolutely not. But today at least, it was definitely a nice outlet to just like tune the world out for 30 minutes and do something just for me. Not because I wanna lose weight or I have to or it's some sort of punishment, just because I wanted to. This was good for me. This was, this was good for me. Day 24 was really good. I actually adjusted my seat up another inch. I thought I had adjusted it up enough since my fumble of having it too low, but um, I was watching more online and I feel like I still needed it higher. So I put it up a whole nother inch today. Today I did another one of the scenic rides where I just listened to my own music and I didn't even have the leaderboard open for the whole ride. And I clicked on it at the end and I had like, eviscerated my previous record for that ride. I think just cause I get so into the music, I want to push and like keep up with the beat and the tempo. Whereas when I'm in the class, it's easier for me to kind of settle into staying right on par, staying right within the ranges, which I feel like is probably the opposite for most people. They get most motivated when they're in a class, but I don't know. I'm just very musically motivated, I guess, because I beat my last record by like 10 points and I, wasn't even really crying. I didn't think I was going that hard. So just in case anyone has been wondering where Bella sits now that we've moved her mat behind the bike, don't worry, she is uh, keeping a close eye on me as I ride from the futon. One thing I realized I haven't really touched on yet in this video is body positivity or even just confidence and, and body acceptance in general within these Peloton classes. And I would say, you know, as a person who tries to surround myself with body positive influences, for the most part, Peloton's pretty good with that. The only thing that's been said in one of the classes that I was like, ooh, I disagree with that mindset was one of the instructors, you know, super lighthearted, but she just made a joke about like, come on, you guys, you have to earn that glass of Chardonnay after this. And I know that seems totally harmless, but especially for someone like me who has a history with pushing too much in exercise and restricting too much in what I eat, I've tried to get rid of that mindset of earning food in my life. But other than that one small comment in a ride from like a week ago that I did, I've been very pleasantly surprised with how encouraging and accepting and I'm really really pleasantly surprised for the most part with the content in terms of like body acceptance on Peloton. But anyways today was a good ride. I did the 30 minute pick me up ride and then I did a five minute cool down. I'm gonna be going on a short walk later today too so I didn't push too hard in either of those rides. I definitely got my sweat on, definitely got a good workout and 
I'll see you guys tomorrow, day 26. I'm on the first day of my period and I have awful cramps. So I actually had a really active day. I had gone on a walk in the morning and so I was like, okay, I'll get on the bike and you know, I'll just do like a free ride. So I can end at any time, I don't have a time limit. I was like, maybe I'll just do five minutes and that's fine today, that's what I'm gonna do. But I got on and you know, they say that exercise is good for period cramps. I personally never believed it, but uh, my cramps low key feel a little bit better. <laughs> and I feel good that I got a workout and I ended up doing 30 minutes I actually got a personal record which is awesome because I had very low expectations for myself on this ride today And it actually ended up being a really good one. All right day 27 not feeling great. I'm on the second day of my period and that's usually the worst for me, but I still wanted to get on the bike today and I thought, you know, maybe it'll be like yesterday and I'll feel better after. Nope, my body had other plans. I uh, I just finished. I ended up doing 30 minutes, but I took it really slow. But you know what? I'm still happy that I got on the bike and that I got some movement into my day because I will probably be spending the rest of today laying on the couch with a heating pad on my stomach. <laughs> Day 28, I just finished a 30 minute scenic ride through the French countryside. I have to say, now that I've done quite a few of these like self-guided scenic rides versus the actual structured classes, for me personally, I think the classes might be a little bit overrated. The classes are still really good and I'm still doing them from time to time, but I think, especially now that I'm wrapping up this video, I think I'm gonna be doing mostly scenic rides as my main ride and then probably doing like a guided cool down ride after, which I'm about to start right now actually. Day 29, I enjoyed a nice 30 minute class with Hannah Frankson. It was a 2000s themed ride and I really liked her. It was my first time doing a class with her. She was great, but Man, it's just so hard for me to like go back to doing a class where I'm not in control of the music versus doing the scenic ride where I just get to really get in the zone and jam out to my own playlist. So for my cool down ride, I ended up deciding just to do a 10 minute scenic ride and listen to my own music and I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed both actually. I just can't believe we're almost done with this video. So I will see you guys tomorrow for day 30. All right, friends, we made it. It is day 30. I have no idea what ride I want to do today. I hadn't picked one out in advance. It feels like I should do some sort of special ride since it's the last day of this video, but I don't know what. I'm torn. Do I do the Broadway ride? Do I do the Lizzo ride? Or do I do a scenic ride with my own music since that's what I have been enjoying so much? I don't I gotta go put my shoes on, so I'll, I'll have to decide by then. <laughs> All right, I just finished my last ride of the video. I ended up deciding just to do a scenic ride since those have been my favorite since I can play my own music. I jammed out to Hamilton and all my other favorite Broadway cast albums and of course, Taylor Swift. <laughs> and I cannot believe how much my stamina has increased over the past 30 days. I've noticed a big difference over the past like week and a half, two weeks, just of like how much I'm pushing my resistance and my cadence and how much higher my output is for each class. But today, after I finished my ride, I actually went back and like scrolled to my earlier workouts and my total output for my rides now versus my rides in like my first week is such a huge difference. I've definitely gotten in better cardiovascular shape through this past month and I definitely have built up some more muscle in my legs as well. I can really feel it, especially when I'm turning up the resistance. And also I think my body has just gotten really comfortable with cycling as part of my daily exercise and movement. So tonight I'm gonna sit down and like write out all of my thoughts and then we'll sit down tomorrow and I will give you guys my final verdict, all the things on the Peloton bike and comparing it to Soul Cycle. All right, so I've actually got quite a lot to say with my final thoughts on the Peloton bike. So I'm gonna divide it into four categories. My overall thoughts on Peloton as well as pros and cons, answering your questions about the Peloton bike and my experience, comparing Peloton with Soul Cycle, and number four, the final verdict, should you buy a Peloton bike? All right, so my overall thoughts on the Peloton after 30 days, pros and cons. I used the Peloton bike on 26 out of the 30 days for a total of 44 cycling workouts. I cycled 193.9 miles and I cycled for 13 hours and 52 minutes on the bike. I noticed quite a big increase in my output from week one to week four. My stamina increased a lot. I got in better cardiovascular shape and it seems like I definitely did build more 
more muscle mass in my legs. Also, every single day that I rode the Peloton bike, I also closed all three of my activity rings on my Apple Watch. So I just thought that was an interesting correlation. So pros, I really liked it. I found the Peloton bike enjoyable and fun and motivating. The instructors were really good and there's a ton of different class difficulty levels and lengths, so lots of variety. I love how customizable it is to your individual wants and needs. You also get the added benefit of exercising in private. You don't have the added stress or worry of people looking at you or judging what you can and can't do. And you never have to worry about what you look like or smell like. But because Peloton has those aspects of the leaderboards and the live classes, you still get some sense of community like you would in an in-person class. The bike is pretty much silent. They say it's designed so that someone could ride it while another person is in that same room sleeping. Steven said he wouldn't know I was on the bike until he would hear me like huffing and puffing and singing from the other room. But the bike itself makes no noise. Me on the bike, I, I probably made lots of noise. The convenience is really unparalleled. If I just have like a quick 20 minutes to get some movement into an otherwise pretty sedentary day, Peloton makes that really, really easy. And if I'm just having one of those days where I have no motivation to push myself, the classes are really, really nice because I'm just following the instructor and I don't have to think. And the Peloton bike being in home makes it quarantine friendly. Also, I was a little bit nervous going into this that the metrics and the leaderboard could be unhealthy for me because of some of my past tendencies, but I actually found it really motivating to see my personal record for other rides of that length. And it didn't end up being unhealthy for me personally. I paid more attention to my personal record and where I ranked on that rather than where I ranked compared to other people taking the class. And on days where I just wanted to take it easy, I just hid the leaderboard so that I wasn't bothered by my output or my rank being lower than usual. I found myself trying to like keep up with my past personal record and one up myself all the time, which really brought out my competitive spirit because I'm a very competitive person, but instead I was just competing with myself. All right, so cons. One of the number one questions I actually got for the question portion that I'm gonna answer right here is, does the Peloton bike make your butt hurt? And yes, it absolutely freaking does. And that is one of the cons with getting started. Your butt will get used to the seat after a couple weeks, but that adjustment period can be rough. And there are a few ways to help that that definitely helped me stick it out. You can get padded cycling underwear like I did. I wore mine for like the first three weeks. And after that, my butt pretty much adjusted and got used to the seat. But I will continue to wear the cycling underwear on a particularly long ride or one where I'm planning to stay seated for most of the time. You can also get a gel bike seat cover. This helps a lot. I got one for ours and I also used to use these when I went to SoulCycle. Next con, the app interface has some room for improvement. It's not bad, but I mean, for how expensive this thing is, it should be better. The layout on the actual bike screen is great, but once you switch over to the iPhone app, things get a little bit less good. <laughs> for example, you can't see or manage your bookmarked classes on the app. You just see a preview of some of them. So you have to actually go on the bike to see the classes that you've bookmarked. It's also hard to search for classes. You can only search on the bike, not on the iPhone app. Another con, if you are very musically motivated like me, but have more obscure music tastes also like me, there aren't gonna be a ton of classes that are perfect for you. Although they do have a huge backlog of on-demand classes, the music stays pretty mainstream. Also, the classes can get monotonous after a little while, which I think is why I found myself switching to more of the self-guided scenic rides after the first few weeks. It's also really important to get the right setup and the right technique, otherwise you can injure yourself like I did with my knee. And if you're a beginner, it could be hard to figure out that proper technique and form on your own. And the last con, it's expensive. It's really expensive. And it's not just like a one-time upfront cost because there is the monthly membership. All right, now I'm gonna answer the most commonly asked questions that I saw popping up on Instagram that I didn't get to address in the previous parts of this video. Who's your fave instructors? So my favorite instructors were Toon Day, Robin, Emma, Sam Yo, and Ali Love. Can you please explain whether purchasing other equipment is necessary? In addition to the bike itself, you'll also need 
to purchase clip-in cycling shoes. I'd also recommend getting a bike mat to protect your floor. We actually ended up ordering one of these after we had received the bike and we realized that it's kind of a necessity. I'd also recommend getting an industrial fan. That is a game changer for keeping you cool on the bike. There were a few times where I just forgot to turn it on at the beginning of the class and I had like 20 times the sweat. And these next few things aren't necessities, but things that just personally, I felt like they enhanced my Peloton experience. I really liked having a fitness watch to track my movement and my heart rate and having the padded underwear and the gel bike seat cushion were really helpful in getting through that like butt seat adjustment period. <laughs> Next question, do you think you will continue to use it often without filming a video to motivate you? So I would say definitely yes. Although filming this video was definitely extra motivation to try and get to the bike every day, I think I'll continue to use it probably a minimum of like three to four days a week. I actually finished my last ride day 30 three days ago now from when I'm filming this wrap up section. And I've actually ridden the Peloton bike all three days since then. So I definitely think I'll continue to ride it. I really enjoy it. Was it harder on down days? So I actually think the Peloton bike made it easier for me to get some movement into my day on days where I wasn't feeling my best because I don't have to commit to like a full on workout. It's not all or nothing. I pay the same for the bike, regardless if I do like an hour long workout or a 15 minute workout. So on days where I'm just not feeling it, I can do just a, an easier class, a low impact class, something just leisurely. And I could always do one with an instructor when I was lacking motivation so that I didn't even have to like think or plan. I just shut my brain off and follow. A lot of people wanted to know if it gets boring or repetitive. And I would say, yeah, it can. I do think I started to get a little bit bored around week three. And I think if I hadn't switched to doing more of those scenic rides, I might've lost interest. A big part of that was honestly the music. And once I started alternating between the structured classes and the scenic rides where I use my own playlist, I definitely got back into it. And the last question, do you think you'll still be interested in Peloton workouts three to five years from now? This is a great question because with a really expensive purchase like the Peloton bike, it's important to think about your cost per use. The Peloton bike is expensive, but if I continue to use it for, let's say three days a week for the next five years, if we take into account the initial price I paid for my bike package, which was $2,617.26, plus the $39.99 a monthly membership, that comes out to about $6.43 per ride. And that cost per use will continue to go down if I keep using the bike for more than five years. And honestly, the Peloton bike is something I, at this this point, see myself using indefinitely. Like I said, spin is kind of my ideal type of exercise. I thoroughly enjoy it. And because it's in my home and has the on-demand classes, it's just so convenient. No matter how my life and my lifestyle changes, I see the Peloton bike fitting into that and my exercise routine long-term. So for me personally, I see that cost per use evening out because I do intend to keep using it for years and years. Now let's compare the Peloton bike to SoulCycle. Right now we're under a safer at home order here in California. So actually going to a SoulCycle class isn't even an option, but I still wanna compare the two for when hopefully we do get out of this difficult time in the future. So SoulCycle does not give you any metrics as you're riding. It's really about feeling the music and the energy and pushing to that. And Peloton is very number centric. It's tracking your cadence, your resistance, and your output, and then comparing that output to previous rides and to other people on the leaderboard. With Peloton, I did like knowing what my resistance was at and also just how much time was left in the class. But I think with SoulCycle, I was more likely to actually push myself in the class because A, I was surrounded by other people doing it, and B, I was feeling the music versus looking at my metrics and the zone I'm supposed to be in and going, oh yeah, I'm like good for this section. I don't need to push any further. Peloton is way more convenient. Just having it in your home versus like actually driving to a studio, parking, getting checked in, going to the locker room, all those things. But if you use exercise as a social activity and you like that community aspect of being surrounded by other people in the class, you do miss out on that with Peloton. They try to make like the leaderboard and the hashtags and the sending high fives feel the same, but it, it's not the same. The instructors for Peloton and SoulCycle, I would say are about the same for me. Like, like they were good, they're motivational, and I liked most of the instructors I tried for both. Because the Peloton classes are remote, I did find that it was more customizable than SoulCycle for what I wanted out of my workout on any given day. Like 
I was following an instructor, but if I wanted to modify some of the exercises, I could without affecting the rest of the class. With SoulCycle, when I'm not following the instructor, it does feel like a little bit disrespectful. Peloton's classes being on demand also means there's just so much more variety than there is with SoulCycle. If I wanna do a feel good class or a Broadway class, I don't have to wait for one to come up on the schedule. I can go back into that backlog of classes and choose whatever ride I want. Peloton is definitely more beginner friendly than SoulCycle. With SoulCycle, you just kind of get thrown in with the same people that have been doing it every day for the past three years and try your best to keep up. And with Peloton, you can actually ease your way into it because there are so many beginner classes. It is less intimidating, but Peloton has way more of a startup cost. The Peloton bike starts at $2,235 for the most basic package and the membership is $39.99 a month. SoulCycle doesn't offer any sort of membership for their in-person classes and each class costs $36. So with SoulCycle, there is less risk because there's no big startup costs like with Peloton. But if you're looking to do cycling classes multiple times per week, Peloton actually will be cheaper than SoulCycle in the long run. Let's say you wanted to cycle five days a week for the next year. With Peloton, the monthly membership and the upfront cost of the bike would cost you $2,000 $1,714 for that first year. With SoulCycle, this same exercise regimen would cost you $9,360 for a year. So if you're cycling regularly, Peloton is actually a better investment. Overall, I would say I prefer Peloton to SoulCycle primarily because of the convenience of having it right there in your home, the huge variety of classes that are available on demand, the flexibility and ability to customize and modify rides for my needs and wants, and the fact that I feel about the same in regards to the actual classes and the instructors themselves. So the final verdict, would I recommend buying a Peloton bike? If you don't like cycling, don't get a Peloton. It's not gonna make you magically like cycling. It's really not very different from other spin classes and programs. But if you're like me and spin is like your favorite kind of exercise, it might be great for you. Having the bike in your home is super convenient and the on-demand classes are really, really great for days when you just don't have the motivation to lead yourself through a workout. They have a great variety of instructors, of class styles and lengths and classes for varying fitness levels. The main draw with the Peloton bike specifically though, are those real time metrics appearing on your screen and the leaderboard. So if you're someone who is very motivated by competition, both with yourself and with others, and you like seeing those metrics, then the Peloton bike might be worth the extra price compared to a stationary bike from a cheaper brand. But if you're kind of like meh about the numbers, if it's just not that appealing to you, or if you're looking for a more budget friendly option, don't buy the Peloton bike. Instead, buy a cheaper bike that's not a Peloton and a mount for your iPhone or your tablet. You can get a brand new stationary bike starting at like 250 bucks, or you can get them even cheaper by getting one used on like Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist, and then just pay for the Peloton digital membership, which is actually cheaper without the bike. It's currently $12.99 a month and you get access to the same classes. They're just on your personal device. The only real difference is you won't get those real-time metrics or the leaderboard or the live classes. This is a much more cost-effective way to still get a stationary bike in your home and get access to the Peloton classes and instructors. But if the metrics and the Peloton bike specifically really interest you and you have the money, I do think the Peloton bike is a good purchase and I'd recommend it. The bike itself is very nice and it rides very smoothly and silently. The screen is really, really nice. And at the end of the day, is $2,000 for a stationary bike ridiculous? Yes. But are there stupider things to buy? Also, yes. If you're gonna spend a huge amount of money on something, at least with the Peloton, you're investing that money into yourself and your health. If having it in your house motivates you to move and connect with your body every day, then it's worth it. I personally, as I said, did really like it. I found it fun and motivating both the bike itself and the Peloton classes. It has its flaws, it's not perfect, but I think I will definitely continue using it. And it seems like Steven will too. So for us, I would say it's a good purchase. All right, Steven, how is your month on the Peloton? 
So my executive summary is that I really did like it. I was on it for 11 active days in the past 30 days. So about once every three days, but like looking at my calendar, it was very bursty. Like I'd get on it like three or four days in a row and I'd be really into it. And then like there'd be a distraction like, oh, I can't write it today. And then my motivation would just be gone. So out of the 11 active days, I had 14 workouts. So I doubled up on some. And yeah, honestly, had I not already really liked cycling and thinking it was like the best form of cardio of like really pushing myself, it would be hard pressed to justify this, but I don't know, I, I like it. From an engineering perspective, it's a very well-built machine. So, and then an interesting point is that unlike Sierra, I only did the instructor classes. I don't have any source of like that self-motivation to throw on headphones and like do my own. I was like, I don't care for that. I really like the instructors. And for me, that was like the biggest part of the experience. And then, you know, also having just a nice bike. Yeah, for me, Peloton, nine out of 10. I really liked it. I'm happy we have it. And I'm surprised by how much I liked it. Wow, 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 wow. I can't believe we finally reached the end of this video. If you're still watching this, let me know down in the comments that you made it to the end and I will do my best to heart and respond to as many of those comments as I can. I have no idea how long this video will end up being, but I do know that I have hours and hours of footage, so I'm gonna guess probably pretty long. <laughs> if you want more fitness videos like this, let me know down in the comments as well. I had a lot of fun with this past month. So be confident, be kind to your body, and I will see you guys next Friday with another new video. Bye.